HD. You're watching K Gun 9 on your side. News at 9. Hello, and thanks for watching tonight at 9. I'm Simone Del Rosario. Maggie Vespa is out on assignment. Well, just in time for tomorrow's storm, Tucson crews are finishing up cleaning last week's massive storm damage. Yeah, we'll just keep tapering that so it doesn't fall into the hole. One crew spent most of the morning clearing a storm grate near River via Entrada after last week's storms flooded the area. A spokesperson for the city says crews have spent a lot of time prepping for tomorrow's storm, getting sandbags, signs, and equipment ready. Golden Ranch fire volunteers handed out sandbags to area residents this morning, running out in less than two hours. So we're, we're out there, we're working, and, and we're prepared uh, the best we can. We know what we have out there. We know the, the combines. We know the, the points that we're concerned about, and we're out monitoring those closely. Both Golder Ranch Fire and Northwest Fire will have additional staff on hand tomorrow, ready for any rescues. And TUSD is preparing to deal with tomorrow's major storm as well. The district is encouraging parents to make sure contact information is updated and be accessible by phone or email all day. Classes will continue as planned, but all after school programs have been canceled. In Cochise County, they are relying on sandbag dispensaries to get people prepared for the storm. What is new, though, is this high tech emergency operations center in Bisbee's county complex. Starting at about 8 a.m. tomorrow, it will be staffed with county employees tracking Odile's rem Out of the ordinary things that, that they may need as far as equipment, and then also keeping them, again, informed of you know, another wave of storms coming in. Anyone in need of sandbags or with any questions about help available, head to our website, kega9.com. Now, your first warning weather with Chief Meteorologist Aaron Christensen. Odile is definitely on the horizon, already seeing some light showers moving through the Tucson area. This is just round one, if you will, of the rain. Round two moving through tomorrow and round three. Well, that's the real big one. That's going to move in Wednesday night through Thursday morning. And those sh showers still continue here across southern Arizona. They're lifting to the north, but we're also seeing quite a bit of rain just south of the international border that has yet to move in and will move in overnight. But again, keep in mind the wettest 12 hour time frame for Tucson will be Wednesday 6 p.m. through Thursday 6 a.m. when our chance for rain is a whopping 80 to 90 percent. We are tracking Odile on our future cast radar and it'll take us hour by hour where we're expecting the rain. That is coming up. Well, thanks, Aaron. Some weather related damage is already out there. Union Pacific train derailed last night near Picacho Peak and severe weather may have been the cause. We sent Keaton Thomas to investigate. It was a mangled mess when we arrived this morning. Cars leaning off tracks, containers smashed and dented. Other trains stopped in their tracks, not able to get through the area. All this due to a train derailment just north of Picacho Peak from about 1030 last night. Union Pacific says this train was headed from Houston to Los Angeles, and you can see how big this accident was. 39 cars derailed from down there into the mangled mess you see down this way where they're continuing to clean up this morning. Heavy machinery was doing the heavy lifting for the rest of the morning and day, removing damaged cars from the tracks. Last we spoke with Union Pacific, they could not confirm the cause. Now the National Weather Service told Nine on your side, heavy rain, high winds and downbursts of wind as high as 60 miles per hour were in that area at the time of the accident. That could have been a factor in this derailment. But for now, the Union Pacific did confirm with us that there were no injuries and no hazardous materials spilled here. Near Picacho Peak, Keaton Thomas, Kega 9 on your side. Oral Valley is searching for a serial criminal who they say broke into many people's cars to steal their belongings. Over 50 cars had things stolen from them during recent months. Nine on your side first investigated this on Klein Canyon Drive, just west of Oracle Road, where there were 30 break ins in less than two weeks. Oral Valley police say that they have identified 26 year old Tori Reinhardt as a suspect. If you have any information, call 911 or 88 Crime. You're about to see what it's like to be caught in the smoky warehouse fire. As Kagan 9 on your side's Craig Smith reports, it's at the heart of Rio Rico's fire district's training to help firefighters rescue others and save themselves. Get set. Go. In a fire, an air pack means life. So these firefighters learn to put it on in a flash. 
They are training in one of the giant warehouses of Santa Cruz County's produce industry. The firefighters know they are much more likely to die in that sort of big box structure. For most residentials and, and small restaurants and small commercial structures, you're within 20 to 30 feet of an opening to get out of it. In the warehouse like this, there's places here where you're 150 to 200 feet from an opening. With smoke this thick, firefighters have no chance to see their way to safety. So Rio Rico Fire is teaching its own firefighters and crews from other departments how to stay oriented in a world of blinding smoke. Freeze through. Can you help me? Get out of the way. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. The simulated smoke makes things much tougher, but it still is not the full experience of being in the heat and noise of a real fire. So this is designed to build the focus and confidence firefighters need to run towards the danger. The tougher the test, the stronger the confidence. Strapping on full gear and squeezing through a 16-inch gap between wall studs was tough for the big guy the firefighters call Little Ricky. You go, Ricky. The first time I had to do it, I thought it was impossible, but uh, um, I had some encouragement from uh, Frank Granados, and uh, he was able to coach me through it, and I got through. And then after that, I've been I've been able to do it like, like with, with ease. And firefighters cap their training with a simulation of their most important mission: pulling someone safe from a fire. In Rio Rico, Craig Smith, KGUN 9, on your side. Tucson's Raytheon Missile Systems has just signed a nearly $120 million contract to produce rocket kits for the United Arab Emirates. The kits are Talon Lasered Guided Rockets. Initially, they will be produced at Raytheon's plant in Tucson. Raytheon co-developed the Talon system with the UAE. As they described it as a low-cost kit that will fit onto the front of unguided rockets used by the U.S. and its allies. And there's a brand new mural underway at the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum. Local artist Joe Pajik has created the, one, or the 30 by 9 foot piece. The mural is part of overall renovations that the museum is doing in the Cottonwood building. There's a whole host of creepy crawly creatures that are showing up on the mural, including some supersized frogs and dragonflies for visitors to look at. All those additions are paying off, and the Desert Museum has been named the number nine best museum in the entire world by TripAdvisor. Well, the United States is getting more aggressive in the Middle East as things ramp up between the Islamic State and the Allied Coalition Against Terror. We'll tell you what's being done to make sure Baghdad stays in U.S. hands. Plus, litter bugs who get a taste of their own medicine get to know the motorcyclist that's being called a garbage superhero.
U.S. ground forces could be headed back to combat in Iraq if American military commanders believe it is necessary to defeat ISIS. That's the word from the country's top general today. If there are threats to the United States, then I, of course, would go back to the president and make a recommendation that may include the use of U.S. military ground forces. The White House will also ask, ask Congress for a half billion dollars to train, arm, and equip about 5,000 moderate Syrian rebels for one year. Aggressive new steps by the U.S. in the fight against the Ebola virus. Today, the president announced that America is sending troops to battle the outbreak. And if the outbreak is not stopped now, we could be looking at hundreds of thousands of people infected with profound political and economic and security implications for all of us. Up to 3,000 U.S. military personnel will be on the ground to support a new command center in Liberia targeting at fighting the spread of the virus. Rihanna is on the outs with ABC, or sorry, CBS, and the NFL. The singer took to her Twitter this morning, angry at them for wanting to run an opening video to one of her songs after they pulled it from last week's premiere. She wrote, CBS, you pulled my song last week. Now you want to slide it back in this Thursday? Y'all are sad for penalizing me for this. CBS now says it is moving in a different direction with the montage. It originally pulled the segment in the wake of the Ray Rice domestic abuse violence due to the serious tone of the opening. The network said the music video was not appropriate at the time. While Arizona could be seeing a lot of rain, California really needs it. Right now there are 18 wildfires burning, destroying homes and forcing evacuations. Firefighters say one of the most damaging fires in a small northern town called Weed. It's only 20% contained. I started to smell smoke and happened to get up to see what's going on. It was so close to me. I was just shaking in my boots because I could see the fire suddenly jumping. 1,500 people have been forced to evacuate the town of Weed. The 400-acre fire tore through a church and burned at least 100 homes to the ground. It's one of nearly a dozen wildfires burning in California, including this one outside of Yosemite. And further, north in Oregon, more wildfires raging out of control. Outside of Portland, 2,300 acres already charred. Residents were seen packing up what they can, knowing the flames are still spreading. UPS is going to make it a happy holiday for lots of people looking for work. This holiday season, the Parcel Delivery Service plans to hire up to 95,000 seasonal employees. That's nearly double last year's total. UPS hires thousands of temp workers each year to help deal with the annual surge from packages from October through January. This seasonal workers will be paid at least $10 an hour. UPS says after the holiday season, many of the temporary jobs could become full-time positions. For more information on how to apply, head to our website, kega9.com. And Pima County is asking you to help celebrate World Car Free Day. This coming Monday, you're asked to give your car a staycation and find a different, more green way to get around for the day. You can even win prizes for helping the environment. There will be a link posted to our website where you can log your car-free trips. It only takes one entry to get you in the drawing for a new e-reader, a $100 gift card, or one of the many other great gifts. Well, if you hate to see people litter, you may love this story of a biker who chases litter bugs and throws their trash back at them. She's become an anti-litter hero. And the question is, is her story garbage? CNN's Jeannie Most sorts through the trash. Did you ever see someone dump their trash out of their car and you wanted to throw it back at them? It might be safer to just come along for the ride. With the vigilante anti-litter lady. Watch a woman throw an empty cigarette pack out her window. The biker chick pulls alongside and dumps a conveniently located ashtray on the litter bug. The response in Russian from inside the car rhymes with which. <laughs> biker speeds away and the car blog Jalopnik swoons. This is the motorcycle riding superhero of our dreams. The video opens with the Russian words. I want to live in a clean city. For her second exploit, a guy tosses a bottle, which she picks up and then tapes to his mirror. Is there a medal we can give her, asks one commenter. She'd just throw it back in your car, answers another. Her third and last act of revenge occurs as the driver of this ultra luxe Mercedes SUV drops a McDonald's bag while pulling out of a handicapped space. 
She swoops to get it, demands he open his window. When he does, she yells, hey, take it, you haven't finished it, splat. Karma so satisfying, so complete, so, so fake. Hilarious though, someone posted. A lot of people theorize that the video was meant to go viral as part of an anti-littering campaign and that it's all staged. Not that we'd ever stage anything. Ooh. But hey, companies like McDonald's have been known to do digital anti-littering campaigns. That's a go for McDonald's. The biker chick likewise chucks her trash in a McDonald's garbage can. The video ends with the words, everyone will be punished who doesn't care. Real or staged, if litter makes you bitter, this is sweet. <laughs> Ginny Mo, CNN. Hey, yeah. New York. Sweet for you, Aaron. You really love recycling. I, I do. You're into that. I, you know, I can honestly tell you there have been times I've been tempted to do something similar to that. And then I stop and I think, uh, I don't know how crazy that person is who's behind <laughs> the wheel of the car. You know, with that being a, a woman doing that or anyone doing that, you just don't know when you're going to cross the wrong person. I'm surprised that one person rolled down their window. Right. Yeah. So no dumping trash, but dumping rain. Oh, well, yeah, cats and dogs worth of rain over the next 48 hours. We're already seeing some pretty decent showers moving through the Tucson metro area. We are tracking Odile's rain. That is coming up. Now, K-Gun 9 on your side first warning weather with Chief Meteorologist Aaron Christensen. Tropical storm Odile is on the horizon, already seeing some showers, the first round, if you will, of rain from the system, albeit light rain, now moving through southern Arizona, but this storm system is going to pack quite a punch beginning tomorrow, especially tomorrow night through Thursday morning. We are going to see upwards of five inches worth of rain in the metro area, in the valley locations, and well over that in the mountains. So right now, our tropical storm sitting 110 miles to south of Rocky Point, and right above 
about here is where we start seeing it taking more of an easterly turn and it will make its way across northwest Mexico overnight and then become a remnant low once it enters Arizona tomorrow. And again, it has shifted its course just a bit, a little farther to the east now. So that definitely puts Tucson really under some of the heaviest of rainfall from this system. Again, we're still seeing some of those showers and storms moving to the north across southern Arizona now. You're not noticing too much in the way of lightning strikes. That could change tomorrow as we expect to see some uh, intermittent clouds with sunshine. That sun will help heat things up and we can get the convective process going. Even without that, though, we still hold on to a 70% chance for showers, potentially some thunderstorms tomorrow with 85 degrees our high. Now that rain is certainly going to be heavy at times even during the day, but then really picking up with some vengeance here 6 p.m. Wednesday through 6 a.m. Thursday. That's when we have anywhere from an 80 to 90 percent chance for rain for the Tucson area. Here's what it looks like on our future radar. We watch that mound of very heavy rain here. The yellows, the oranges, the reds, the browns moving in across Graham and Cochise counties as early as 6 o'clock Wednesday. So about evening we start seeing some of that heaviest of rain moving through. And these rainfall rates, by the way, up to uh, maybe two inches of rain falling per hour with these storms here where you're seeing the darkest of color. And then that still shifts into eastern Pima County. So certainly going to see some very heavy rain, especially across Graham, Greenlee, Cochise counties and eastern in Pima County, even stretching up into southeast Pinal through the midnight hour and then taking us through early morning Thursday, 6 a.m. That early morning commute could be a messy one. So please give yourself enough time Thursday morning to get to work and make sure you have extra time, if you will, to get to your destination in case you get diverted because there is a flooded road on your path. Look at this weather prediction center upwards of seven inches worth of rain close to the international border. We're going to have to keep close tabs on that Nogales wash. Not only that, but you see where Tucson lies right there between that red and purple. That means anywhere from oh about two, two and a half inches worth of rain, potentially up to five inches worth for a storm total. So meaning Wednesday all the way through Friday. Our flash flood watch covers almost the entire state of Arizona, taking us through Thursday night. The rivers that we are urging you to avoid, the Gila, San Pedro, and Santa Cruz rivers, these are going to flood. We're likely going to see some of those offshoots, those tributaries of those rivers flooding, including Sabino Creek, Brawley, and the Nogales Wash. So please, this is not the day to uh, let your children play in these washes. You know how quickly that wall of water can come through, and we do not want a repeat of what happened with Norbert last week. So just use some common sense. 70% chance for storms tomorrow, 80% for your Thursday, and then we'll continue to recycle some of that tropical moisture Friday all the way through the weekend with anywhere from 20 to 30% chances for rain taking us through that time frame. Our temps will stay in the 80s here through Friday and then warming up a bit into the 90s by the weekend. But this storm system definitely meant to be taken seriously and make sure you have enough time to get to your final destination as I wouldn't be surprised if we do have quite a few uh, washes that are flowing over the roads, making them impassable. Really good advice. Thank you so much, Erin. We yeah. were covering it on Monday and it was some devastating scenes and we don't want to see that again. We definitely do not. All right. Well, coming up next, a strange light over New Jersey. It's not the beginning of an alien invasion, but it did come from space. Find out what it was right after this.
HD. You're watching K Gun 9 on your side. News at 9. Well, observers from New Jersey to Ohio got a super sight Sunday night. A meteor blazed across the sky at the speed of tens of miles per second. Scientists say the meteor was 60 to 100 miles above the Earth and about the size of a smart car. So where did it come from? It spent the last three or four billion years orbiting the sun before entering the Earth's atmosphere. After thrilling Earthlings, scientists say the burning rock probably shot back into space. Hmm. <laughs> Fascinating. It's always neat when you've got the video to prove it. A smart car yeah. flying that's, through the sky. That's pretty big. <laughs> All right, let's give you a look at the seven-day forecast. 85 degrees tomorrow with a 70% chance for rain. These numbers, by the way, as far as those chances for rain, might be a bit conservative. Even 80% Thursday, 30% Friday. So please use caution. We'll be safe out there. That's our time. We'll see you at 10.